If I just started riding a dirt bike, I would do this. What's up Rad Family, I'm Dakota Freeman and welcome to the Rad Adventure Dude channel. So if I was just starting to ride a dirt bike, I would break it down into three different levels. The first level being a very beginner, the second level being a little bit more intermediate, and the third level being advanced to where you can kind of progress in the proper way to learn the safest way possible. In the first level of learning how to ride a dirt bike is make sure you're riding with the proper gear. You wanna at least have a helmet, a pair of boots, just to keep your head safe and your ankles as well. Because especially when we're learning how to ride a dirt bike, it's gonna be very new to us and all the controls are gonna be foreign. So we might not always have everything go perfectly and just making sure that we have a good helmet, a good pair of boots is really gonna make sure that you can stay safe. On top of that, I would always suggest wearing at least long pants, a long sleeve shirt, you know, a motocross outfit if possible. It's a little bit more arid and easier for your body to breathe in. But as long as you have pants on, a long sleeve shirt, boots that at least come up over your ankle, or a full motocross boot would be much better recommended, and a full coverage, full face helmet. Those things are going to be the gear you need to make sure you start riding your dirt bike in the proper way. The second part of level one is going to be to make sure that we learn the controls properly. There's going to be five controls on a dirt bike and we want to know how they work, what they do before we even start learning how to ride a dirt bike. The five controls are going to be our throttle, our clutch lever, our gear shifter, our front brake, and our rear brake. These five controls are what we're going to use to actually get the bike to go into motion, put the bike into gear, and even be able to slow the bike down, bring the bike to a stop without it stalling. So learning these five controls is gonna be very critical to how we progress in our riding and especially how fast we progress when we're learning how to ride. Then once we're getting comfortable with the controls and we actually are ready to get on the bike, there's a few basic techniques that we need to know that is gonna make us have a little bit more comfort on the bike and have a lot more control even as a beginner. These few things are gonna to be to one, make sure that you always have your elbows up. Having your elbows up is actually gonna give you so much more control over the handlebars. Making sure to where if we try to turn the bike, lean the bike over, or if we hit a bump or anything like that, that it doesn't knock us all around on the bike and that we can keep the front wheel pointed in the direction we're going, keeping us off the ground and still riding on our dirt bikes. The second basic technique that I wanna go over is gonna be that we're gonna slide forward on the bike whenever we're actually going around a corner because I see a lot of the time new riders when they're trying to turn on their dirt bikes, they're way back on the back of the seat and this gives us a horrible leverage point as we're trying to corner the bike and turn it around. So if you slide a little bit more forward to the center of our seat, it's gonna just give us a lot more comfort and a lot more control to actually be able to turn the bike whenever we're ready to do that. If you're way back on the back of the seat and you try to turn your handlebars and turn on your bike, it's gonna just wanna go really wide around a corner and it's gonna be really hard to make a sharp corner. Getting your body weight a little bit more forward on the front of the seat to the center of the seat just also is gonna give us more weight over the front wheel. So if we get a little aggressive with our throttle, it's not gonna to wanna to pick that wheel up and it's gonna help us keep that front wheel on the ground. So it's not only gonna help us with our cornering, it's also gonna really help us with keeping our front wheel on the ground and making sure that we don't do any accidental wheelies from the very beginning here. Another basic technique that I wanna go over is keeping our head forward over the handlebars. This kind of ties into the last tip that I just told you. However, just keeping your head a little bit more forward, no matter what else is going on on the bike, is gonna also just really help you get a lot more control out of your handlebars. As you can see, I'm spending a lot of time talking about control because as a beginner, we wanna really focus on not going fast, but just simply having more control and better handling over the dirt bike. Then as you get more comfortable, the speed will come with time. And this is not a basic technique video, so I'm not gonna dive into every little thing that we need to know. However, the last thing I wanna cover in this section is gonna be that we grip the bike with our knees. If we're gripping the bike with our knees, with our elbows up, head forward over the handlebars, which is also gonna pull our body a little bit more forward, that's just gonna give us the most control and the perfect spot to learn as we're riding our dirt bikes. And as well as if we hit any bumps or anything and the bike gets kind of knocked around, gripping the bike will just help us kind of even bring the bike back to where it should be as opposed to getting bucked all around. So let me just go over these one last really quick time. We're gonna always make sure that we have our elbows up 
and that our head is going to be over the handlebars. We're also going to make sure that if we're cornering or even just riding on our dirt bike that, our, that we're sitting in the middle of our seat to the more forward position on our seat, giving us more control over the front of the bike, putting our weight over the front of the bike as well. Then we're going to make sure we're gripping the gas tank or the middle of the bike with our knees to make sure that we just have a good connection with the bike and that it's going to really make learning how to ride as easy as possible. So that's going to sum up level one to my beginner basics, what I would do if I started riding a dirt bike. Now we're going to move into the intermediate section, which is going to be a level two, and that is going to be diving deeper into our body techniques. Yes, we still want to have our head forward over the bars. We still want our elbows up. We're going to always be gripping with our knees, but now we need to add in a few more things to really help us dive into riding with even more comfort and control. We need to always make sure that when we're cornering on our dirt bike, that we slide forward up to the gas tank and that is going to get our body weight all the way forward, giving us more traction over the front tire. We're then going to want to make sure to lean the bike over to the inside as we are actually cornering on our bike. When we do lean the bike over to the inside, we're not going to lean over with the bike. However, we're going to actually use our upper body and use our elbow up technique to actually push the bike to the inside while our body is going to stay upright around the corner. So our bike will be cornered leaning over to the side while our body is actually still upright and our upper body is going to be using our leverage to really drive the handlebars to the ground and this is really how we get around corners in the fastest way possible. As we drive our handlebars to the ground and our body weights forward, we're actually going to have more traction out of the tires, we're going to be able to corner sharper, and that is going to make us have so much more comfort and control when cornering on our dirt bikes. Then if you find yourself out on obstacles, trails, tracks that are really bumpy, the second part of this intermediate level two lesson is that we need to actually learn how to stand up properly on our dirt bikes. If we stand up, we can actually go over much rougher trails or hit tracks much faster, come into corners much faster, and be able to let the bike bounce underneath us while we're actually driving into the corner without having all those bumps actually affect our body. So we need to always stand on the balls of our feet, and we're going to have our knees slightly bent. We're also going to make sure that we have our head over the handlebars, so we're going to be kind of leaning more forward over the handlebars as well. Our elbows are going to be up, and this is going to be our attack riding position. This attack riding body position is perfect for when we're learning how to ride because we want to make sure we're developing good habits now so that we don't have to think about it later. So as you're learning how to stand on your dirt bike, you really want to practice standing on the balls of your feet, you really want to practice bending your knees and gripping the bike with your knees while you're standing. Then we're going to be hunched over just a little bit, but our back is still going to be straight. Our hips are going to be slightly pushed backwards. And at that point, we're going to be leaning over the handlebars. Elbows are up on the handlebars. And that is what's really going to give us the best riding position when we're learning how to ride. There will be some times when we're going down straightaways, we want to get our body weight a little further back on the dirt bike, but no matter what, we always want to make sure that our head stays more forward on the dirt bike and almost over top of the handlebars all the time. That is what's really going to make sure that if you hit a bump or something and get knocked around, that it doesn't affect your body and it gives your upper body the most amount of leverage over the handlebars to be able to control the dirt bike and keep that front wheel pointed exactly where it's going. So make sure that you work on this over time because standing up is going to be a really difficult part of learning how to ride a dirt bike. It's definitely not going to come on the first day and it's not going to feel comfortable for a while. I also find a lot of the times people struggle with shifting gears while standing up. Just keep working on this and as it becomes more comfortable, it's going to, you're going to get so much better on your bike and it's all going to come with time. So just keep practicing these techniques. If you are struggling with shifting while standing on your dirt bike, I have a video specifically made for that and it'll really help you out. So just go ahead and check that out after this video and that'll help you with shifting while standing. And as an intermediate rider, we need to know that dirt biking is not something that's learned in the first day. Dirt biking is not mastered over the first year. However, it takes a lifetime of practice and perseverance to truly dive into this sport and to become the best possible. 
We don't want to be the riders that go out there, turn the throttle wide open, we're out of control, but we're going fast. I want to teach in the opposite way. I want us to go out there and be meticulous with the way we ride. I want us to have better body positioning, more comfort on the bike, and then once you're comfortable, that's when you can start to turn the throttle, go faster, and you're going to have more control when you're starting to do that, which is going to make you so much safer. Always be practicing these tips as it's really going to help you improve your body positioning, improve your overall comfort on the bike, and then you're going to be going faster without even having to work for it. Congratulations guys, we've made it to level three, the advanced section of this video where I want to show you the, some more advanced techniques that we're going to need to learn once we're really ready to go faster on our dirt bikes. If this video is already helping you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and go ahead and drop some comments down below. Ask me any questions you have or leave me some feedback. I love to hear it. So now we're into the advanced section of this. So I wish I would have known when I started riding a dirt bike how important all the controls really are and how many different little techniques that apply to every one of them from sliding our brakes from rolling on the throttle the amount of technique that comes out of using our controls is limitless and i'm going to dive into a few very important ones but there's no way i could cover all of them in this video so the most important ones that i have come to realize is going to be first especially when learning is going to be rolling on the throttle we don't want to go zero to a hundred on the throttle every single time because what we're actually doing is unless our body's in the right position, we're just going to spin the back wheel, losing traction, and when the wheel spins and doesn't lock up get with the proper traction, we're actually not projecting the bike forward. However, we're just spinning the back wheel and throwing a lot of roost behind us. And that's really not the fastest way to get out of a starting line or to get down a straightaway. The fastest way is to be able to get that traction, smoothly rolling it on will keep your wheel actually gripping to the ground instead of just breaking loose and starting to spin. We can also add our body techniques into this by putting a little bit more weight over the back wheel. However, you want to make sure that you don't have the front wheel come up and you do any accidental wheelies when you're doing it like this. But as you roll that throttle on, it's going to make it a lot more consistent. And then you're going to know what the throttle response is to where if it's going to want to pick up and throw you over the back of the bike or put you in a wheelie. So knowing the throttle response on our bike and how, it, and how uh, consistent it is, is going to be very important to actually how much traction we can get out of that rear wheel. We can get more traction out of the bike, but simply just rolling on that throttle as we come out of a corner or start going down a straightaway is really all it's going to take to keep that back wheel from spinning and really just shooting a bunch of roost behind us. So rolling on the throttle is something I really wish I would have known when I started, especially once I started getting into advanced techniques, because it's going to make it so much better for you when you're coming out of a corner, if you have to hit a jump, or any time that you're looking for more traction on the dirt bike. The second one is going to be how to use the throttle as we're coming off the face of a jump. All the time I see riders either coming off the jump with so much throttle that it just wants to pick up the front wheel or they come up to the jump and they kind of get that in between of I want to jump it but I don't want to clear it, kind of a scared little fear mode. And what they do is they let off the throttle where then it just wants to kick their back wheel up. So we really want to avoid both of these things by using the throttle in a nice mellow tone coming off of that face. We want to make sure we're in a good mid-range on our gear, we're not wound all the way out at the top of the RPM level, and we're not just coming out and going to be at the low end of an RPM level where we don't have enough acceleration to really carry our speed through the jump. We want to make sure that we're in a good mid-range on the gear, that we have a good acceleration coming into the jump, we already know the speed, and that we carry our momentum and a nice smooth, easy throttle all the way through the face. And I always like to make sure that I do have the throttle on as I'm coming off the very top of the face of the jump, just to make sure that it keeps my front wheel nice and level as I'm flying through the air. If you come off, and especially if there's a big kicker at the top of the jump, then it's really going to want to kick your back wheel up right at that last moment. And in this instant, I would even apply even more throttle or even really just kind of blip the throttle right at the top. And that's going to really help keep your bike level as you're flying through the air as well. Body positioning in this sense, very important. 
we're going to make sure that we're in a good attack position, we're going to make sure we're nice and centralized on the bike, and we're always going to make sure when we're jumping that our head is forward right over top of those handlebars. That's going to make sure that we have plenty of leverage going forward or back on the dirt bike, and that way we have a little bit more control over the bike when we're in the air. So those are going to be very crucial whenever we're learning how to jump the bike and keep it nice and level in the air. Other things are going to be whenever we're in the air, I like to blip the throttle as well because it pulls the RPMs up, it keeps the wheels spinning, which in turn is going to actually keep the bike nice and straight as we're in the air. And then always, always land with the throttle on. If you're landing sideways for some reason, or if you're landing even nice and straight, landing with the throttle on, but just make sure that your wheel's turning and then it projects your bike forward as you're landing. I know sometimes we're going to land into corners and this is going to be a hard thing to do, but that'll come later where we're going to talk about some other techniques. But just to make sure that we're landing with the throttle on is going to make sure that the bike lands in the smoothest way possible. So make sure that when we do hit the ground and we're ready to land, we always land with some throttle on. Then we can immediately get the throttle off, lock up our brakes, downshift, whatever it takes if we're coming into a corner. But just to keep you guys as safe when you're out there learning how to jump, landing with the throttle on could really save you if something's going bad. Another mid-air technique that you can do is use your back brake to do a brake tap. If you do this, you're gonna make sure that you wanna pull in the clutch to before you hit the brake because if you hit the back brake without the clutch pulled in while the bike's in gear it's going to stall the motorcycle and it's going to cut your bike off in the air and we don't want that to happen so make sure if you do this brake tap technique that you pull in the clutch before you hit the brake and that's going to drop your front end down if it's going over too far to the back if it's in the opposite motion of this and your front end's too low then you're going to want to grab a handful of throttle and that's going to help you pick that front end back up before you land. So knowing how to do a brake tap to get the front end down as well as knowing how to get on the throttle to keep that front end up is going to really help you when you get out there and start jumping on your dirt bike. More advanced techniques are going to be diving into braking control. Brake control is huge especially as we're wanting to advance and go faster on our dirt bikes because as you're going to find out everyone's hitting the same jumps, everyone's going the same speed down the straightaways and where we can actually make up time and become and develop to be better riders is going to be in the corners and this is either getting on the gas sooner to accelerate faster or even out breaking the competition so braking is actually going to be such an important part of becoming a better motocross rider when we're braking the advanced techniques i want to go over are going to be diving hard on your front brake when you do this you want to make sure that you have a good control over the handlebars your elbows are going to be up because when you grab that front brake in this aggressive way it's really going to want to lock up that front wheel and that's that's not what we want we don't want it to lock up and put you on the ground however we want to make sure that we're standing we're going to be in that attack position, we're going to be ready for anything with a good strong hold over our handlebars. We're going to use both our front brake and our rear brake at the same time. But really, the more aggressive you get with the front brake is going to be the most important because that's truly how you're going to stop the bike in the fastest way possible. And while we're using the front brake in this aggressive way, we're using the rear brake all coming into this corner. We're going to even be downshifting to use the gears to slow us down as, as well. So you can see how this is a pretty advanced technique. We're using three controls to help slow us down. And it's definitely not going to be something you learn at the beginning of your riding. But as you get better at this, you can start to outbreak your competition, get into corners much faster, carrying more momentum, and that's going to really help you drop your lap times out on the tracks and the trails. When we're doing this, we want to make sure that we are in that good attack position. And I even like to use my brakes, but get this is one time I'm saying that it's okay to get a little bit further back on the bike. You still want your head nice and center over the handlebars. You still want those elbows up, but pushing your your hips back a little bit on the bike just kind of helps you seat that back wheel on the ground as you're coming into a corner or slowing the bike down like this because the more aggressively we use that front brake it's really going to want to pick up our back wheel and that's what's really going to send us over the front of the bike and do a stoppy and we don't want that to happen as we're aggressively using our brakes like this we want to make sure that we're keeping both wheels on the ground with good traction to really help us slow down so pushing our hips back a little bit as we're using our brakes is going to be a great way to help keep that back wheel on the ground. 
and then downshifting using the RPMs of the bike and the motor to actually use the engine brake to slow us down while using the rest of these brakes is going to be the fastest way to outbrake your competition. Now let's dive into something that's going to be a little bit funner to talk about. Wheelies are actually an advanced technique to really help you get faster on your dirt bike, go over rough sections on the tracks and trails much faster, and if we can wheelie while standing up, we can go over really rough obstacles without even feeling it affect our bodies. So learning how to wheelie is going to be a huge part of becoming the best motocross rider that we can. It's not going to be something we learn early on in our riding, but as we learn this, it's actually pretty fun to learn as well. I like to teach using the power of the bikes to help get the front wheel off the ground. And by doing this, it kind of gives you more control instead of popping the clutch out and getting it up that way. I do that whenever I'm in the trails and I'm like having to get over a log or something. However, if I'm just wheeling down a track or a trail to get through a rough patch of acceleration bumps or brakey bumps or whatever bumps have formed, I simply just use the throttle, I get back a little bit further on the bike as I'm standing in a nice attack position and using that throttle to actually pick up the front wheel, I even use my upper body to kind of pull up on the handlebars just slightly and that's going to be all it takes, especially if you're on a 250, 350 or a 450, to get that front wheel up and to be able to wheelie over some rough bumps. And as you do this, you're going to want to start small, progress into it as you're comfortable, and ride a wheelie for just a short amount of time at the beginning, and soon as you get more comfortable with it, you're going to be riding them longer and longer and longer. Don't just go for a 0 to 100 on this and just try to whip that front wheel up, because it will come up, and when it does, you're going to want to know how to control it before you get to that point. So practice by pulling the front wheel up and just simply using a little throttle and then just let the front wheel drop back to the ground and keep doing that over and over until it gets more comfortable and you're gonna find where you can pull the front wheel up you're gonna feel where your body almost locks into a balance point and you kinda use that spot to keep the front wheel right where it is as you're using your throttle I have more videos that dive deeper into this topic so I'm gonna keep it pretty brief for this video if you wanna learn more about wheelies I'll put a link below and you can go check those videos out so going into the next part of this is going to be corner speed and corner speed i've said it before i'm going to say it again is the most important part of truly becoming the fastest rider out on the tracks and trails we're all going to be hitting the same jumps we're all going to be going the same speed down the straightaways and corner speed is that little bit that makes the entire difference between a great rider and a good rider so learning how to master your corners, having the most control in the corners is gonna be such an important part and learning how to practice your corners in the best way as well. When we're practicing our corners, we wanna make sure that we are using a great body positioning technique of having our body weight as far forward over the handlebars as we can get. We're gonna to wanna to sit down on the gas tank as far forward up on the seat as we can get giving us the most leverage over the front of the handlebars and that's truly what's going to help us get around sharp corners much faster. Then we're really going to want to focus on braking coming into these corners as late as possible while holding our speed and then as we come into the corners we might even be standing up braking once we get into the corner past all the brakey bumps we're going to sit down in that very forward up front on the dirt bike position lean the bike over and go ahead and start getting back on the throttle as we're making that corner and then before we even start hitting any brakey bumps we need to go ahead and get back to the foot pegs stand that bike up and stand up on the pegs as well that's going to be an excellent way to get around corners the fastest way possible and it's going to really make you much faster because if you're coming into a corner standing up then you're avoiding all these brakey bumps that you're going to see you're going to sit down right when you get to that corner and go ahead and start applying throttle again then you're going to try to get back to the pegs standing up before you even start hitting these acceleration bumps because you do not want to be sitting down on the seat as you start to hit these bumps as it's going to really wear you out you're also going to have to let the throttle off because you're going to feel how much it takes away from your control as you're coming out of these corners so making sure that we are standing up as much as possible. We're really focused on our braking coming into these corners and getting more comfortable with our braking. And then we're gonna roll on that throttle as we're coming out of the corners is gonna be the most important part of learning how to master your corner speed. 
I have a lot more tips and techniques into more videos. I'll put them in the links below because I just cannot dive into all the different mastering techniques be between the corners, between wheelies, jumping. I mean, there's so much little stuff that I talk about in the rest of these videos, but I will put links below. So go ahead and go check out those videos. They're really going to help you dive into whatever part of your riding you want to master. So the last thing that I wish I would have known in this advanced section here when I first started riding a dirt bike is that momentum is key. Momentum around turns, momentum over jumps, momentum down straightaway, simply eliminating that time between braking and getting back on the throttle, eliminating the time that we're coasting and we want to either be aggressively using our brakes or we're getting right back on the throttle and get the coasting time out of our riding because that's going to be where we really start to lose time, where we could be holding more momentum going that much faster. So always think about the momentum that you have when you're out on the tracks and trails and truly how important it is as well. So hopefully all these different advanced techniques, intermediate techniques, beginner techniques help you because it's something I wish I would have known when I was getting into riding. I know that there's a lot of different stuff I cover in this video, but I promise you if you listen to it, take what I'm saying and then even see that you need to dive deeper into some of these details in your riding, go find those videos that I've already made dive really deep into the specifics that I'm talking about and really start to practice them and instill them in your riding. And that's when it's really going to start to become second nature and make it so much easier for you. The last couple of things I just want to tell you are going to be to never ride over your head when you're out on the tracks and trails. If you don't feel comfortable, then you need to stop right there. Get comfortable before you either send yourself into an obstacle, hit a jump for the first time, because we're all out here and it's a dangerous sport and we want to stay safe as we're learning. So never ride over your head and put yourself in a bad situation. You always want to make sure you're comfortable with what you're doing. You're in control of the dirt bike and that's going to be very important to keeping you safe and keeping you riding your dirt bike because that's how we're going to get better. If you get hurt and you have to spend six months on the couch or two months on the couch, then you're not going to be getting better. So maybe saying no to hitting a big jump for the first time, hitting a big obstacle and saying, you know, I'm going to get a little more comfortable and then I'm going to come back and conquer this. That might be the best thing to do. Another thing is going to be to focus on your technique of your riding over just turning the throttle and going faster. If you work on these techniques that I teach you, then going faster is actually going to come so much easier because you're going to instantly have more control and more confidence over the dirt bike. So working on your techniques before just trying to go fast is going to be such an important part to becoming a better, safer, and a happier dirt bike rider. Speed will come with time, speed's going to come with comfort, going fast will come with comfort. So just get comfortable on the bike, work on those techniques, and never ride over your head. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and drop some comments down below and ask me any questions that you have. And if you're still looking for more dirt bike riding tips, I'm always here. I've made a full dirt bike riding course over on my website and it'll walk you through being a complete beginner and take you to an advanced rider mastering the tracks and trails. I also give away a free dirt bike guide. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter and I'll send it straight to you. Make sure you click the subscribe button that's right here and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future dirt bike riding tips. After that, you can watch my next video right here. Stay rad and I'll see you over there.